Emergency Medicine at New York Presbyterian Columbia University Medical Center. And by the way, he was the very first Ebola patient here in New York City. Dr. Spencer, thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me, Ed. I, I don't want to forget the context here of you being the first Ebola patient uh, dealing with the virus back in about 2014, as I recall. People stigmatized you, questioned uh, some of your movements, why you had gone bowling and, and all the rest. What did you learn from that experience that might inform what we're going through now? What I've been telling people is I survived Ebola and I fear COVID, I fear coronavirus. There's a lot of lessons that we learned in 2014 and 2015, not just internationally about how we should prepare, but here domestically. And unfortunately, a lot of those lessons have been forgotten. What I think is, has happened is that it's left us all vulnerable to a pandemic like coronavirus and what we're seeing on the front lines. It's dire and really amplifies the, the lack of preparation People, unfortunately, are dying because we weren't prepared. Mm. And I just want to share the message that we're seeing this here in New York City. I'm seeing it in my hospital. I'm seeing it in, in all hospitals around New York City. We're not prepared. And I want to make sure that message gets shared with everyone across the country because yeah. my hometown is in Michigan. They're starting to deal with it now. My best friend's in, in New Orleans. I'm hearing stories down there now. My family is down in Florida. We're hearing about a huge number of uh, in case, uh, cases there. This is going to roll across the United States, and everyone still has more time to prepare than we did. Absolutely. All right. So much to digest there, but I, but I want to get right to what you were saying. You said you want to get this message out. Here's your chance. I mean, as I talk to friends around New York City, they say Columbia Presbyterian is one of the elite, one of the most remarkable hospitals maybe in the world. What are you seeing? Is it a war zone as we hear people describe it? To put it this way, I've worked in the middle of a war zone. I worked during a civil war in uh, in East Africa. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of a lot of the havoc, a lot of the chaos, a lot of the concern, and this, especially the mental anxiety, is quite similar. Like I know that people are getting mixed messages from politicians and not really understanding what's happening. This is a story from the front line. I'm not a politician. I'm a physician, and this is what we're seeing. The empty streets do not really reflect the reality here, here in New York. Times Square may be empty, but our emergency rooms and our ICUs are not. Mm. We've had the highest number of ambulance calls ever, including on 9-11. One of my colleagues found a 49-year-old otherwise healthy, diagnosed with coronavirus, dead in a chair. Mm. My first two patients yesterday, I went to work, my first two patients were respiratory arrest, put on a mechanical ventilator from coronavirus complications. Normally, I'll see one of those every two or three shifts. It was my first two patients yesterday. Wow. We're already talking about how... We consider palliative care and withdrawing care in the emergency department because we're concerned. We know that hopefully we're starting to peak in terms of our numbers sometime soon in the next few weeks. But new case numbers do not reflect the number yeah. of people inside emergency rooms and ICU. So we know even here in New York City, where we've been dealing with this for weeks, we still right. have a hard road in front of us. We do. It doesn't say anything about the other places in the country that are just starting to see uptick in cases now. Well, it's so important to hear everything you're saying. We've got less than a minute. I, I just want to balance out what Governor Cuomo has been saying, though, here in New York. Yesterday, he was saying um, that uh, 75,000 here in New York have tested positive so far. 10,000 of those have gone to hospitals. 5,000 treated and got better in those hospitals. So there are people in your hospital and others here in New York City getting better. The president, Dr. Absolutely. Fauci, last night warning people it could be hell. That's what they said for the next couple of weeks. But they see light at the end of the tunnel. Do you see light at the end of the tunnel? I think we all want to see that light. But what we're seeing right now are the fluorescent lights in the emergency rooms reflecting off the goggles of our colleagues who are tired, who are exhausted, both physically and, and mentally. Mm -hmm. And we know that we have a long fight in front of us. And I just want all of my colleagues around the country to be ready for the same. And I want everyone to do their part. Stay inside. Take these messages seri seriously. Listen to your public health professionals because we're trying to share what's happening on the front line and, and it's yeah. dire. All right. Well, Dr. Craig Spencer, as we noted, you survived the Ebola virus. We're glad you did and that you're here to be on the front lines helping us to get through this. We really appreciate your insights today. Thank you. Thanks, Ed. All right, Sandra.